Yeah, so uh, w when should startups go, go globally uh, in a startup life cycle? When, when, should, uh, when should they go, go globally? Um, do, do you see a, a specific time in, the, in a startup life cycle that startups should think about going globally or not? Okay, so, so me being an old timer, uh, there's a book, uh, and, and any startup person needs to read this book, and it's called Crossing the Chasm. Yeah. And Crossing the Chasm is, is an interesting book that was, in, was written in the late 80s, like 87 or 88. Yes, that's right. I read it for the first time, maybe 91, 92, and it really kind of uh, opens your mind. So let me, let me give you like a quick, quick overview, and I'm sorry, I'm trying, I don't want to make this long, but the idea was this. They, they, they did some study, and they found these companies who, were, who raised hundreds of millions of dollars in venture fund. They were backed by Intel. They were so successful. They were prodigies, big time. And everybody, when they looked at them initially, they said, these companies are going to just kill it. And, well, interestingly, you know, three, four years later, these companies went out of business. And they have these other companies who people looked at it and like, oh, you're just a loser, you know, and they didn't have enough funding and that issues. But then eventually they just became huge. And one of the examples was Intuit. And Intuit is, you know, the one that makes QuickBooks, which is, uh, the third largest software company in, in, in the world, believe it or not. Although, you know, a lot of people don't hear about them. Everybody hears about Oracle and Microsoft yeah. and this and that. Well, they're actually they're number three. And, uh, and so the, 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 the question was, how did these companies who had a bad future ended up becoming, you know, huge uh, monopolists of, of their marketplace versus these other ones who were prodigies and had hundreds of millions of dollars and were backed by Intel, et cetera, didn't, didn't make it. And the answer was, when they actually, this guy looked into these various, whatever, 100 different companies, he found out these companies actually stuck to a very specific process of going after very specific verticals or very specific groups of people. And they went after, you know, uh, you know these specific markets. And then they went from the, the early adopters all the way to the, so they went from the, the guys, you know, within these companies who were so excited about new technology to the the, uh, the the CFO who are a lot more tamed down and a lot more pragmatic. So they went through the full cycle of owning a little town, one little town at a time, and then attacking China versus trying to go attack China from day one. Because what they found out is to attack China and go international from day one, you're going to spend so much money and still you're not going to be able to, to break the wall of China. But these little companies who went out with one and they – attack little cities and little towns and, and grew little by little to create a momentum eventually were able to attack to attack China so to answer your question is uh, at what stage does a startup go international my answer is don't go international uh, because if the, the word startup and international should not work now some guys like me who've got infrastructure and capability and done their math and have the the funds and the capital or whatever it is to do something like that uh, fine because to me I'm not, not honestly. I'm not going international with Zaristo. I'm just going local, where my software development folks are, are building software, so I can make my developers close to the client, and and develop a much better uh, quality product, and then I bring it to the U.S., which is local to me. But I'm not going after Togo or or, or South Africa, where I don't have any representation. Um, mm -hmm. So, so the answer, you know, to answer your question with after this long <laughs> answer is is uh, just don't go international. Just just. Yeah. Survive, get on your feet, make money, uh, make it happen first, and then go to college. Then, then take your baby to college and go to the next level. Yeah. So, wearing your investor hat, um, in one minute, what factors do you take into consideration when evaluating a business? Um, I, I think I have it on my uh, on my uh, LinkedIn site. I think I have four, but I'm tr I'll try to remember them right now. Um, one, you have to have a good concept. You can't have a crappy concept. So you have to have a good concept. That's number one. Number two, you have to have a good management team. And you know, and I, and I know this this sounds very uh, uh, cliche, but you have to have a good management team uh, to be able to get that concept going. So good concept, good management team. And number three is intellectual property. You have to have protected or protectable intellectual property because today, and with all the stack and all the software developers and everything. Uh, you get a, if you have a cool idea, you know, I could hire three guys over two months and I could replicate anything you're, you're doing from a technology perspective. So you want to have a little bit of protection on your intellectual property. And then you have to have a growth strategy. You have to have, uh, so, you know, the concept, which is in the value proposition, people are willing to pay money for it. 
good management, intellectual property that you can you can cover. And uh, number three is you have to have a growth tra strategy, which is distribution. You have to have ability. Wouldn't it be great to do this, which is a really cool idea. It doesn't work anymore. You have to have a distribution model. You have to have that idea growing in a, in a much faster way than just going out and you know wasting a lot of money trying to explain the concept to every person. Yeah. So to me, those are the four fundamental pieces, which mm -hmm. is concept management, intellectual property, and, and distribution or, or, or a growth strategy.